How's everyone doing? Today I have a horror Blu-ray collection update with four pickups. And if you've seen any of these four movies, definitely let me know what you think of them. And let me know which one of these is your favorite as well. Leave me a comment down below. And first up, I want to say that I got all of these for on a uh, Facebook group. Uh, and I got a good deal. I, it was all four for 20 bucks shipped. So I was souped on that. Uh, some movies I've been wanting to add to my collection for a bit. Uh, a couple of these ones I haven't seen before I purchased them. And then I ended up watching them before doing this update. And, you know, it's... I like doing blind buys. People will ask me all the time, why do you do blind buys? Why do you go to a movie theater and see a movie you haven't seen? It's the same thing, except usually you pay less and you can own them afterwards if you like them. It just makes more logical sense. You know, if you go to the uh, to see a movie in the theaters, it could be, you know, 10 bucks, depending more, you know, depending what kind of theater you go to. And if you go with a date and if you get food, drinks, you know, you could be 40, 50 bucks right there. <laughs> I don't know, just, you know, you might not like the movie. There's no guarantee. The same thing with purchasing. There's no guarantee you're going to like it. But if you do like it, you can have the movie afterwards. You can keep it. You can watch it whenever you want. Or if you don't like it, you could always resell it or trade it. Anything like that. You know, get some kind of value out of it. Anyways, I digress. Let's go ahead and get into it. First up is uh, Little Terrors Presents Minutes Past Midnight. This is a Horror Pack Limited Edition Blu-ray. And one of the things that I like about the Horror Pack ones, you get all the numbering right there on the spine. So if you have them all, you can just have them lined up. Certain studios and companies do that as well. Uh, this is a horror anthology, horror short uh, anthology. I thought this was really disappointing. With most, you know, horror anthologies and horror shorts, um, you know, releases, there's it's a mixed bag. There's good, there's bad. You know, you have the ABCs of Death is like another example of a bunch of different shorts. Uh, I thought those were definitely more good than bad uh, and then you, know, you have VHS there's been a whole bunch of different uh, horror anthologies uh, coming out in the past few years but this one to me was disappointing um, the best one out of this one was uh, the ghost train I think it was called and right there and I actually thought uh, one of the ones in the bonus features they have extra short films uh, one of the ones in there was way better than any of the ones on here uh, in the main segment right here there's one where it's just like a, it's very simplistic but it's a couple sleeping and he, you know keeps turning off the light and then the last it's like a jump scare at the end but I thought it was a good build up and I enjoyed it I enjoyed it way more than the rest of them um there are a couple recognizable people in here including Barbara Steele from Black Sunday uh so that was nice to see her in here uh but yeah this one was not worth it says you know an anthology definitely worth checking out no it's definitely not worth checking out I appreciate you know some unique ideas and things like that the execution was poor a lot of it was very formulaic and simplistic uh, a lot of it just needed a lot of extra work. There's a variety of different uh, ideas and concepts here, which I, you know, I, I appreciate unique ideas, like I said, but it just wasn't fully developed here. And uh, I wasn't uh, into this one. I'm disappointed. If anybody wants to do a trade uh, or wants to purchase this one from me, let me know because I'm going to get rid of this one for sure. Uh, again, the best part about it was the extra bonus film right there. They have a few. But the one in particular, I can't remember the name right now, was the best. And the Ghost Train one was good. I liked that one. I just think it needed to be fleshed out a little bit more. And then the ending, too. Wanted a little bit more from that. But, uh, yeah, overall, there were some weird, wacky ones. A uh, kid watching uh, the TV show with the giant bunny and what happens there. I kind of like the concept. But, again, it needs to be... Uh, developed a little bit better um, and then I wanted more from the ending too um, there's a few other ones that you know had uh, the potential to be better than they were uh, next up is all cheerleaders die and this one blew me away I've heard good things about it but I was kind of skeptical I saw the trailer I was like eh, I don't know about it and I love this one really good horror comedy um, there's a couple things that could have been tweaked perfected a little bit but I still enjoy it. I thought it was a really fun ride uh, low budget, but really awesome. Some of the actresses in here were really good uh, and stunning. Uh, it's basically, uh, you know, it's a high school cheerleader team, and uh, one of the girls who's friends with them is a witch, and uh, the girls get into an argument with uh, some of the football players, and this one guy right here is crazy and basically uh, pushes the car off the road and they die. That's not really a spoiler because in the trailer they show that they're coming back to life. So the one girl who's a witch essentially reincarnates them, but when they come back, they have a uh, a taste for flesh, and you know they have to kill people and eat them, and and that's how they get their strength back. And uh, it's just wild and entertaining. There's a couple things again that 
could have been, uh, you know, worked on a little bit more. And then uh, I also thought too, like there weren't many cheerleaders. They kept showing like, you know, you know, four or so of them. And I was like, where's the rest? Where's their, you know, the rest of the click? Uh, same thing with the football players too. They didn't really show enough. I mean, I don't know if it wasn't in the budget to have enough extras. Like when they had a party, there was barely anybody at the party. And there was barely anybody. Like when they were walking down, they come back the next day and they're all walking down the halls and stuff. And everybody's looking at them. It's like, that's it. That's all there are for these cheerleaders. Come on, there's gotta be more than that. Um, <laughs> I don't know how many people are in the school, 12? Like, no, it was way more than that. Obviously, you see more than that in the hallway, but I felt like that was something that, you know, kind of stood out to me. You need more football players. You need more cheerleaders. Um, to, you know, they could be the, the head of the, the whole group, you know, the wee pack, uh, but you still need more. Uh, so that's just like something, you know, that I, that I kind of nitpicked on, but I don't know. It was hard not to notice that if you've ever gone to high school. Uh, <laughs> but overall, I thought it was a fun time, and I actually checked out the feature... Uh, making of, which I thought was really good too. I really liked the performances from um, the lead girls here. And this guy too was really convincing in that role, uh, kind of narcissistic and just uh, how, you know, you, you get the, the sense of him early on. And uh, I thought he had a really good performance here. But uh, yeah, the, the actresses, Brooke Butler especially was the one that I enjoyed the most here, but they were all really good for uh, the female leads. But uh, I had a fun time with this. I thought it was, uh, just a raucous time, uh, had some hilarious moments, uh, and just very entertaining. Super happy on that one. Next up is another one that I really enjoyed, and it's antiviral. Uh, I like the cast here too, Caleb Landry Jones. He's been in a bunch of things recently, but he was, you know, he was in Get Out. That was like one of the ones that he's most notable for now. Uh, Malcolm McDowell, and this is directed by Brandon Cronenberg, the son of David Cronenberg, and this is his directorial debut, feature length, and what an amazing debut. This was so twisted and dark and unique. Uh, you can definitely tell he has some influences from his father, kind of like the body horror and things like that, because there's a couple weird creepy scenes here but this was really interesting kind of a you know satirical take on just uh the obsession with celebrities uh basically it's reached this crazy peak where people are buying like infections that celebrities had like if a celebrity had a cold you pay somebody to get the cold that they had like those germs uh and there's you're buying these meats that are infused with the germs too and you can some people want like stds that the celebrities had it's insane and of course there's a black market and he's working for this company uh that you know deals with it and stuff and so he's injecting himself with some of these diseases and then later like hiding them in his home and selling them and he gets this one uh from hannah geist who's like the big star he gets that disease from her uh and uh, injects it himself and then she dies and then he's trying to figure out how to not die himself uh, and then there's other people, rival clinics and collectors, like chasing him and, and trying to uh, get it from him. And uh, I thought it was really uh, unique and inventive and the ending so dark. And uh, I loved everything about it. Some really, again, you don't see a lot of unique ideas in horror. A lot of, you know, the same stuff rehashed over and over, recycled ideas. So I thought this was really interesting. Again, I like the satirical take on, you know, celebrity obsession. Um, <laughs> Here's a guilty pleasure that I indulge in occasionally is TMZ, it's celebrity gossip. I feel terrible watching it and the people that are on there are so vapid, I, 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 you know, but I just can't help myself, I, I don't know. So I'm not anywhere to near this kind of level at all, uh, but I, just, I see uh, what they're, you know, they're making the message of and the obsession with them. And um, I thought it was really interesting and in how far, you know, it can go. And I actually believe there are people out there for sure that would be doing things like this uh, right now. And then some good special features on here too. I checked some of that out and uh, it was interesting to see. I felt like Brandon Cronenberg was really quiet when he was doing uh, some of the interviews and stuff during the making of, uh, really reserved. Uh, so I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, I know he was probably kind of living the shadow a bit of his you know, father. You have a famous father like that. Uh, it's kind of hard to do your own thing and get away from that but uh, i thought he did an amazing job here i can't wait to see more from him in the future and then last but kind of least is vhs viral i remember liking this a lot more when i first watched it forever ago i did a movie review of this on my channel you can check that out that was a long time ago now i don't know like five years ago at least but this is easily the worst of the VHS franchise. I hope they make more. And I think it was, again, using some creative, unique ideas, which a lot of these horror anthologies do. Uh, but for this one, it's, it's three in here. It's uh, Bone Storm, 
uh, Dante the Great, and then Gorgeous Vortex. Gorgeous Vortex was so bizarre, uh, kind of ridiculous when you have the reveal of it. Uh, that was the most entertaining to me. And this is, again, three segments, but has the wraparound where, you know, he's uh, trying to follow this ice cream truck and, you know, kind of record it. And there's all these other people trying to do the same thing, too, chasing it. And his uh, girlfriend goes missing. Uh, it's kind of trippy and then at the end, but I, I feel like it needs to be developed more. And then you have um, Dante the Great, this magician who finds this cape. And it gives him, like, supernatural powers. Uh, and then Bone Storm is uh, these kids like skateboarding. I think they go down to Mexico and then they kind of see like this satanic cult uh, and you know they have to fight to survive. Again, it's all uh, found footage as well for this uh, horror anthology. So it kind of plays into the VHS tape aspect. Uh, and then uh, Gorgeous Vortex is this guy who's trying to create a, I guess essentially like a vortex to another dimension. And I. Uh, he does it and he goes in there and everything looks to be the same uh, as it is on his side and he meets like the mirror version of himself except there is a couple differences and uh, it is crazy and it has to do with the anatomy and um, that to me was kind of uh, just so wild and ridiculous and uh, entertaining but not enough where I'd want to really sit through the rest of these segments to get there again. Uh, so that one, I think, for me, was my favorite, the Gorgeous Vortex one. And uh, yeah, overall, uh, I just don't think it has enough merit for me to keep it in my collection. Maybe some people might appreciate it a little bit more. Uh, but for me, uh, I don't know, I just you know, I wanted more from it overall. And uh, I remember liking it more when I first watched it. But I can't remember what, I think I might have given it like a 7 or something when I first watched it. But for me now, it's more like a 5. Um, Gorgeous Vortex was the best by far. So there you go, you know, three blind buys, one I had seen before and didn't live up to the memory. So uh, two out of two, not bad, I'll take it. I'm actually really into uh, these two, souped on those. Uh, this definitely makes it worth it. Uh, I would have paid, you know, 20 bucks each for these. Uh, so really happy on that. And this is a, uh, this one goes for a little bit more because it is the Horror Pack Limited Edition. Uh, so I've seen people sell this for, you know, 20 bucks by itself. So I thought that was a great deal. Um, sometimes you can find some really good deals on, um, you know, Facebook groups, just, you know, people asking which ones there's tons out there just searching, you know, Blu-ray selling or something like that. And you'll find a whole list of groups. So, you know, they have local ones too. Like if you look up your town and put like yard sale, garage sale, you know, then you'll find different ones there too. People will sell movies on there. So there's all kinds of good deals to be had out there. So look for them and let me know what great deals you find. Let me know what your favorite segment of any of the VHS movies are. For me, easily Safe Haven, but that had the most time to develop. So I feel like kind of unfair in that regard. But I also really liked uh, uh, Amateur Night with the girl who kept saying, I like you. That was super creepy. Uh, that was in the first one. But yeah, overall, disappointing. But I hope they make more. And I want to see more of the ABCs of Death too. Uh, those ones had, you know, more creative ideas that worked well. You know, some that needed to be polished a little bit more, but they were still entertaining. Uh, ones like this one were disappointing. And Horror Pack has had a few different horror anthologies uh, for their Blu-ray Horror Pack. Uh, one that comes to mind is a sci-fi horror anthology called Galaxy of Horror. I felt like that one only had like two good ones, but I, for me, I kept that one. There's one in particular, it's like, no one can hear you die in space. I love that one. I would love to see that get adapted to a feature length film. Uh, but for me, this one was really disappointing as a whole. Uh, but there you go. Those are the four pickups right there. If you've seen any of them, definitely let me know what you think of them. And let me know which one of these is your favorite. Let me know what your favorite horror anthology is and your favorite modern horror anthology more so because I feel people are going to pick like Creep Show and stuff like that, really popular ones. There's some other ones, but more modern ones I want to hear about. Um, your favorite unique horror movie, creative, uh, favorite horror comedy, modern horror comedy. Um, again, I heard, you know, this falls under the same thing of horror anthology, modern horror anthology. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Leave me those comments down below. And I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.